Welcome. So this is a continuation of a series that we've been working on for deploying Laravel to Amazon AWS. So we started off by having a series of videos about manually deploying Laravel to Amazon AWS. And then there were some subsequent videos on how to manage that infrastructure a little bit better and how to have infrastructure as code and automate some of the provisioning using provisioning scripts. This is where we are today. We want to carry on with some of these DevOps tasks and look at some CI CD pipeline. For anyone who's joined in this video series midstream, let's orient everybody, you know, just very quickly. Laravel has say four tiers. We have web tier, database tier. There's some workers who kind of process jobs that are queued. And then there's a schedule that queues those jobs. This is some of the infrastructure that we've already kind of talked about deploying in past videos. This is the GitHub repo for the Laravel application that we're deploying. So it's a, just a demo app. It's mostly just bare bones, Laravel 11 straight out of the box. We are deploying a monolithic application at this point. So we haven't talk, started talking about scaling at all, where we're going to break this up a little bit. So all four of these tiers, we're sticking them on one EC2 instance. Our EC2 instance looks like this. We have a VPC that spans two availability zones. There's a public and a private subnet in each zone our EC2 instance is deployed to that first zone in the public subnet. In the infrastructure series of videos, we did establish a pretty easy way for us to SSH in as a deployment user and then run a single deploy command. And what that would do is it would pull the brand new code from the GitHub repo, it would build it locally, and then it would activate that release in production. All of this was kind of zero downtime. So we, we talked about all of that in previous videos, but there are some problems with this deployment mechanism that we have. And you know, here are just a few. These deployments are not repeatable. So we're actually pulling code from our Git repo, and then we're using Composer install to pull those assets and NPM install to pull those assets. So every single time we do a Git clone, we may get new assets, you know, depending on how our lock file changes and all of that stuff. So it's not necessarily, you know, super repeatable. So if, for example, you were in a regulated environment where you had to go back and, and you have to go look at version two again, it's pretty hard to get back to version two with our current deployment scheme. Another downside is you have to log in as the deployment user to actually do a deployment. We've already kind of talked about the security. We have these deployment users all set up. We are in a pretty good spot with a deployment user, but still, we still have to log into production or log into staging or log into testing. This should be automated, and we're gonna to get to that automation a little bit. Another thing that should be automated is all the testing. So far, our deployment mechanism doesn't run any tests. We're just grabbing code from the, the Git repo and we're going through the build process and just deploying it. We're not even looking at the test. I really wanted that automated testing mechanism where you know provides me a green light that I can see, oh, okay, everything's good to go. I'm okay to push this to staging or production. And then in addition with our current mechanism, there's no real developer feedback, right? Mm -hmm. I'm locally, if I'm pushing into my dev environment, I can get some feedback to whether it's working or not. Uh, but I really don't have any clue what's happening in staging or production. We want to be able to have these pipelines where as I push new code, I'm getting some feedback because I know my tests have been run or something failed. I get an email. We're going to close that developer feedback loop.